Welcome to this overview of PXF Vector Edge Blur version 2.0. Before we jump into a full setup from scratch, let's have a look at the new features of version 2.0 compared to the old version, version 1.0. So here I have the uh, result of version 2 compared to version 1. And as you can see, the transition between the original image and the motion blur image is now much smoother. And we also keep a little bit more of the original plate for extra detail. So internally, the formula has been changed to allow for a more graceful transition between the original and the motion blur image. We now have control on that transition. So another new feature is the uh, edge mix. Uh, knob. So if we increase edge mix, we'll get more of the original plate. And if we decrease edge mix, we get less of the plate and more of the vector blur image. Another uh, new feature is called edge offset. So if we compare the photography with our result here, you can see that our uh, transition between full opaque and transparent is here on the plate but it's much further inwards on our result so our result doesn't really match photography so we have a new feature here called uh, edge offset and if we increase edge offset we're pushing our hard edge outwards essentially and eventually we can tweak it to match our photography so now notice that my hard edge is in the same spot as the plate so that's another uh, new feature a third new thing in uh, Vector Edge Blur 2.0 is the uh, old edges only knob has been renamed original image on top to better describe what's happening. It also moved down in the interface. So if we turn off original image on top, we only have our vector blur image. And if we turn it on, then in the middle, we have our plate and on the edges, of course, we have our motion blur. So this is it for the new features. Uh, and now we're going to look at a full setup from scratch for beginners. Okay, so now I have my plate here. I have a basketball moving pretty fast and I have motion blur on the edges, of course. And I have a roto that has been prepared of the ball here. And I want to use the roto to cut out the ball and comp it on top of a new background, in this case, just a checkerboard. So let's set that up. First, I need to combine my roto and my uh, plate. So I'll use a copy node with the hotkey K. A is my roto, B is my plate. And then I'm gonna pre mold my plate with the alpha channel. And I end up cutting out my ball and that I have an alpha channel here and I can comp it on top of my background with the merge node, odd key M. A is my ball with the alpha channel and B is the background, of course. And if I put my viewer here, I have cut out the ball and pasted it on my background. So that's great. However, I don't have any motion blur on my edges, of course, because my roto was done without motion blur. Uh, your Instinct might tell you to turn on motion blur here. So let's try that. Let's go in the uh, Roto node in the motion blur tab and enable global motion blur. So this gives us a very good alpha channel. The uh, built-in motion blur feature of the Roto node is very good. So we'll have an excellent alpha channel here. But when we combine it with our plate, you'll see that there is a problem. If we look here, for example, we can see our uh, basketball players uh, clothing in the background here and if we comp it on the back on our new background then we'll see the guys uh, shorts the trees in the background the fence in the background the ground uh, the sky and so on and this is a problem because even though our alpha channel is essentially perfect our image our rgb image is not perfect if we look here all the pixels in the motion blur are essentially unusable for us. So this area here is a mix of the fence and the ball. Here we have a mix of the hand and the ball and so on. So these pixels are for our purposes corrupted and unusable. So we cannot just simply apply a motion blur to our roto and hope for the best. So we need to turn off motion blur here. So let's do that. 
if you have been given Roto, maybe you're not the person doing the Roto and you have an image sequence of Roto and it already has motion blur, don't worry, you can create a hard version of the Roto using a gamma node. And you can crank down the gamma quite a bit and you will end up with essentially a hard version of that Roto. So if you have motion blur baked in, you can get rid of it with a gamma node. If you are making your own Roto, then you can of course turn off the uh, motion blur in the Roto node. All right, so let's go back to our own Roto that we control with the hard edge, like so. No motion blur. So here I want to uh, add motion blur. So to, for that, I'll use a PXF vector edge blur. So I'll go in the PXF menu and call a vector edge blur. And I'm gonna connect it through the image input. And you can see that already vector edge blur does its magic. So it's adding motion blur on the edges, not only on the RGB version, but on the alpha version as well. So what is happening under the hood is that vector edge blur is analyzing the motion of our image. So it knows that the ball was there on the previous frame and there on the next frame, determines the direction and the speed of the motion and applies motion blur accordingly. Once it has uh, that motion blur image, it will put the original image on top in the middle so we don't have double motion blur. Of course, this is already blurry. We don't want to blur it again. And that is ready to be comped on top of our background. So that works pretty well. So if I turn that off and I turn that on, you can see the difference. We can generate those motion vectors internally using either the alpha channel or we can use the full RGBA image. So if you have uh, internal motion, so the ball is spinning on itself or something like that, you may want to choose RGBA and you'll see it's very subtle, but the motion uh, vectors will be slightly different. So you can see the direction is very slightly different. So in this case, RGBA might be an option. I think for most cases, alpha is good enough. Um, also, you can choose which uh, method to generate the motion vectors and the motion blur. You can use the uh, motion blur node or the old vector generator. You might get slightly different results. Vector blur 2 is the preferred method here. If you have a GPU, of course, you may want to use it for faster rendering. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, we have a great option here called edge offset. So let's uh, try that. So if our hard edge is not where it should be, if we compare with the photography, we can see that the hard edge is here on the plate and it's much further inwards on our uh, version. So we can adjust that using the edge offset like so. So now we should be roughly in the same spot. If we compare here and you can also adjust how thick or thin the motion blur is with the shutter time. So most movies are shot at 180 degree shutter in nuke uh, numbers. That would be 0.5. If you need faster shutter, less motion blur, you decrease the shutter time. If you need more motion blur, you increase shutter time. So for this plate, it's about 0.4. You also have a uh, adjust B box. So if you have a bounding box on your image, which I don't, let's get one with a copy B box. Like so. so if you have an image with a bounding box internally, a vector edge blur will adjust the size of the bounding box or increase the size of the bounding box by a hundred pixels or whatever ver uh, amount you wish. So this is to avoid the problem of motion blur streaking if the bounding box is too small. So you want to make sure that's big enough to accommodate your fastest frame. Edge offset is to adjust the hard edge. Edge mix is the transition between the plate and the motion blur. So if you increase edge mix, you'll see more of the original plate. If you decrease edge mix, you'll see less of the original plate. So you, that's how you adjust the transition between the two. If you only want the motion blur version without the plate on top, you can turn off original image on top. And of course, as with most nuke nodes, you have a mix knob. If you want to decrease the effect 
or only have the effect for a certain moment, you can keyframe the mix to toggle between the original version and the vector blur version. Lastly, there is a mask input. So if you only need vector blur for some area of the frame, you can of course uh, feed it an alpha channel and only have motion blur in some area of the frame. So there you go. That was our overview of PXF vector edge blur. Uh, if you want to go deeper, I have another video on the channel called Roto, where do you put the edge? I encourage you to watch that. But for now, that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.